Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, I am Dr. Vikas Mehdi. Uh, today I will be uh, discussing about uh, second part of pharmacokinetics about biotransformation and elimination. As you know that any drug today we talk about, you must know how the drug is absorbed, how the drug is distributed, how the drug is metabolized and eliminated. So, this is important to know detail about the drugs if you call it ADME. So, today I will talk about how drug is metabolized that is a part of biotransformation and how it is eliminated from the body. Now, let us take a part of biotransformation. Now, as you know that when you talk about biotransformation it is nothing but it is a chemical alteration of the drug in the body. So, this chemical alteration is basically enzyme catalyzed process and that alter the physiochemical properties of any foreign chemicals that include the drugs and another term also you use genobiotic I will talk about detail. Now, as you know that it is needed to render a non polar which is a lipid soluble compound and a polar which is lipid insoluble. So, you take an example of lipid soluble or insoluble and that they are reabsorbed in the renal tubules and are finally excreted. So, you can call biotransformation is nothing but a drug metabolism. Now, let us discuss about genobiotics. We are discussing about the drugs, but when you talk about genobiotics, it is a chemical substances that may not be a nutrient and it is in a body as a foreign body and it might enter the body through either ingestion or inhalation or through dermal exposure from the skin. So, that you call it a genobiotic. Now, why this biotransformation is or metabolism is necessary body in a body? Because you know that any a toxic compound or a foreign compounds body react and it need to be de detoxified. Like for the example, I have given an example of genobiotic which may be it is they want it body wanted to eliminate the plants or bacteria or any byproduct or for such you can take the example of some of the toxin. So, later it is extended to the drug or maybe environmental genobiotics. So, if you look at that most of the genobiotic that drug these are lipophilic or before they are metabolic transformation occur in the body. So, if you cannot eliminate it efficiently because some are may not be water soluble, it will accumulate in the body and that result the toxicity. So, main objective of biotransformation and whatever you call metabolism, can you detoxify and body detoxify, so get rid of, of this toxic compound and it is eliminated from the body. Now, look at the site of biotransformation. Now, moment you take any drug orally, it absorb, it goes to the liver, but other than liver also, if you see that liver is a primary site for metabolism, but there are number of extra hepatic metabolism take place also like in lungs, it come out of inhalation or skin or in a gut where there is a fast pass metabolism take place or it can be metabolized in kidney also. So, there are primary site of metabolism in liver and extra hepatic or secondary site you can take example of lung, skin, gut, intestine and the kidney. Now, let us take some of this possibility of biotransformation how 
like as I said that when drug is given, if there is an active metabolite, then definitely you will get an effect and you have to be careful. Now, in the biotransformation, what happened that active drug, it become inactive metabolite. You can take an example of like ibuprofen, lignocaine or paracetamol, it become inactive from the active drug to inactive metabolite. And another example is that active drug, there could be active metabolite because you have a product which is converted to active metabolite, you get an effect. Like you can take an example of amitriptyline which is converted to nortriptyline or you can take another example of digipam which is converted to digipam 6 glucuronide. So, there are two situation is active drug into inactive or pharmacologically it become inactive, but as other another example is active drug also can be become active metabolite which is pharmacologically active. Now, we have certain situation like I have already said about product. These are inactive drug, but following the metabolism or biotransformation, it releases or it actively form active metabolite. Let us take some of the example of active metabolite following inactive drug like pro drug. So, you can take an example of most commonly used drug in you know Parkinsonism, levodopa, it is converted to dopamine. Or you can use some of this centrally acting antihypertensive like alpha methyl dopa it is converted to alpha methyl norepinephrine and you get an effect. So, this is a typical example of product, but some cases if you see the metabolite with potent biological activity or toxic property also generated. So, many times we related to adverse drug reaction following a drug, it is the drug which is converted to active metabolite you get a side effect or adverse drug reaction. Now, if you look at that whole process of biotransformation or metabolism, drug metabolism, it compromised two things. One is phase one reaction, that means these drug it's become inactive one, pharmacologically inactive. But there are certain processes also been taken over in phase two reaction. Now, whole process if you see that phase one, basically you can call it is a non-synthetic reaction. So, within a non-synthetic reaction, drug undergo into oxidation, hydrolytic reaction or reduction. But moment you say it converted into phase 2 reaction, it is a synthetic reaction and there are a lot of conjugation occurs. Like for example, glutathione conjugation, glucuronidation, sulfilation, methylation, acetylation or glycine conjugation. So, one in phase 1 it become inactive or pharmacologically inactive and phase 2 there is a synthetic or conjugation reaction. So, there are several you know conversion take place glucuronide conjugation and with so many example with glycine conjugation. Now, when you look at phase 1 reaction, basically phase 1 is a enzyme that lead to introduction of some of the functional group like hydroxyl group, carboxyl group. So, you can take a several example. So, often if you see this metabolite are inactive, it become inactive and some instantly active only modified or it may enhance also. Like if the metabolite are polar, they are going to escape from the body and in phase 1 reaction often it is processed following the phase 2 reaction. Now, when you talk about phase 2 reaction, this result drug become inactive, most of the drug. You can of course, already discuss that some of the drug release an active metabolite. Let us take some of the example, like if you take an example of conversion of inactive drug into active metabolite, like we have an example of cortison, which is converted to cortisol. Then another example I can take it is conversion of active metabolite like phenacetin, it become you know paracetamol, active drug into active metabolite. Then another example is conversion to toxic metabolite like we have an example of methanol and, and this methanol form a formic acid which affect the eyes. So, these are some of the real example you can take it. Now, when you talk about phase 2 reaction, it is a functional group of metabolites, it is formatted in phase 1 
and serve as an active center for sequential conjugation. As I said, that series of you know conjugation is occurred in phase two reaction. Now, take an example of phase one metabolic product that actually act as a substrate for enzyme in phase two reaction. Like many of the phase one product that are not eliminated rapidly, gradually it get eliminated and what happened? It undergo the reaction and which form the highly polar conjugate. So, you can take a it like this polar conjugate act as an endogenous substrate combined with functional group. Now, if you take uh, phase one which is biologically inactivation of the drug as we discussed. So, basically phase one is that all the pharmacological action become inactive and altogether in phase two which help in facilitate the drug elimination from the body and is a part of inactivation which causes electrophilic and potentially toxic metabolite produce during the oxidation. So, let us take some of the example that how enzymatic reaction take place in you know uh, phase one reaction and what are the reaction take place. If you take an example like, like we talk about cytochrome P450 which is nothing but a heme protein and you can estimate by spectrophotometrically at uh, level of 450 that is why it is called cytochrome 450. So, there are reaction take place through this enzyme is oxidation, dealkylation and so many others. Now, we have an example of flavin containing monooxygenase. So, this is one of the enzyme. So, this is also help in oxidation or epoxide hydroxylase. So, this causes hydrolysis of the epoxide. So, these are the part of phase 1 reaction. Similarly, if you take you know conjugation like enzyme responsible like you can take example of sulphate transference which help in addition of sulphate. So, you can have a number of example like methyl transference addition of methyl group. So, these are series of you know uh, number of super family of conjugated enzyme in phase 2 reaction and some of the important are mentioned here. Now, altogether if you see one part a phase 1 reaction which inactivate the uh, drugs into inactive uh, as a pharmacological inactive you know uh, product. So, in phase 1 we have lot of cytochrome is involved including esterase and other enzyme like epoxide and phase 2 we have another conjugation. So, these are how in phase 1 and phase 2 is taken place. But other than that also let us discuss of some of this you know microsomal enzyme. Now, when you talk about this microsomal enzyme these are nothing but it is located in a smooth endoplasmic reticulum and primarily you find it in a liver, but it can be also found in the you know I said that primary in the livers other than liver also we have in kidney, intestine, mucosa or in the lungs. So, this is nothing but a monooxygenase and it is cytochrome P450 or other than the glucuronide transparency you can take a number of example. So, basically it catalyzed the oxidation reduction, hydrolysis and glucuronide conjugation which help in that detoxifying all this toxic and drug profile. Now, another part is a non microsomal enzyme. So, these non microsomal are present in the cytoplasm or in the mitochondria like you can take an example of flavoprotein, oxidase or esterase, amidase conjugate like in a part 2 when, a, when you talk about phase 2 we have taken lot of example. So, basically it catalyzed some of the oxidation and reduction properties and many of these hydrolytic reaction it take place with through the conjugation and except glucuronation. So, as we discuss a microsomal and non microsomal. So, another is need to know about microsomal cytochrome pre purifying <laughs> any of the drug you say that it is metabolized through cytochrome p450 then you will identify it what kind of family it is i'll go in detail that how you mention about family and the numbers now as i said that cytochrome p450 is nothing but a heme protein and basically 450 has been given because you can measure this 450 by spectrophotometer wavelength 450 so, it is a heme protein. So, it compromise like it comprise of large family like you call it super family related to distinct particular enzyme. Like if you look at this enzyme differ from one to another like you look at the amino acid sequence and you also look at the sensitivity of inhibitors because some of the drug 
it enhances the metabolism because it induces the enzyme. Some are inhibiting. So, another is specificity that reaction to catalyze. So, there is a one part is inducing as an another part it is inhibiting through catalyze. Now, what is their function cytochrome P450? Like basically it metabolizes dietary and genobiotic chemicals, any of the chemicals and drug we talk about. Now, if you see synthesis of endogenous compound like steroid, we can example give an example of fatty acid signaling molecule like epoxy steroid steronic acid or you can think of that how this bile acid and cholesterol are formed. So, these are the example that cytochrome P450 synthesis steroid or the bile acid are substrate specific like you can take example of cytochrome P19 or aromatase and this metabolize only like some of the sex hormone like you can take example of testosterone or endosterone and but it do not metabolize the genobiotic that earlier I had given an example. So, how do you distinguish like as I said that single cytochrome P is metabolized mainly structurally distinct chemicals. So, if I say cytochrome P 3 A 4 that means this single compound metabolized in a different rat and cytochrome P is a root name or super family as you can see that cytochrome P 3 A 4 and this is a root name and super family 3 is a family A is sub family and 4 is given to particular zinc related to the cytochrome. And that is how you need to understand that if you write cytochrome P 450 that root name family sub family and gene number for cytochrome P form. Now, you can be you know little more easier if I say cytochrome isoenzyme are group families distinguished like we put it as 1, 2, 3 and that is how we make it like cytochrome P 1 or P 2 or sub family like you start from A to F. So, you identify letter like cytochrome P 1 A or 2 D and similarly individual isoenzyme it is 1 to 20 and that is how we put the numbers that cytochrome P 2 D 6 or cytochrome 3 A 4 and that is how. So, this is too easy to understand that how a family and super family and how we link to the gene. Now, as I said that important aspect is cytochrome isoenzyme is that invariably drugs are metabolized like if you see 50 percent is biotransform or metabolized by cytochrome 3 A 4 and 5. And in also this enzyme is other than liver it is expressed in intestine and kidney. Now, you take an example of some common drug like how cytochrome 3 A 4 or 5 metabolized particularly carbamazepine it is metabolized by cytochrome 3 A 4, cyclosporin, erythromycin, nephidipine, verapamil. So, you can take a lot of examples. Now, these are also inducer it induces the cytochrome P 3 A 4 like carbamazepine, dextamethorphan, phenobarbital these are anti epileptic drug like phenytoin or rifampicin these are in the inducer. Now, rest of the drug as I said that cytochrome 3 A 4 or 5 it almost metabolize 50 percent of the drug. Later if you see cytochrome 2 D 6 it metabolize 20 percent of the drug. Now, you can take a some of the common drug example like desperiman, imipramine, haloperidol, propanolol. So, these are metabolized by cytochrome 2 D 6. Another example of major family is 2 C 8 and 9 which metabolize also is phenytoin, warfarin or ibuprofenol, tolbutamide. Like normally if you say that phenytoin is metabolized by 2 C 9 and 19. So, 9 is a major, major metabolism and 19 is a minor metabolism. So, it is like 19 to cytochrome 2 C 19 it is also metabolized omeprazole and ranzoprazole the proton pump inhibitors. So, you can take an example of the how many of this drug are inducer, how many of the drug are inhibitors. So, if you induce definitely it will enhance the metabolism. So, we, when you look at the systemic circulation the level of the drug will be decreased. So, that you have to correlate like cytochrome 2 E 1 it catalyzes oxidation of alcohol. So, how many are minor metabolites? So, you can think of and then you can extrapolate the data for systemic toxicity. Now, let us discuss about induction of 
drug metabolism. As I said that some of the drug it enhance the metabolism, some of the drug and for the factors it inhibit the metabolism. When you talk about induction of drug metabolism, you take that enzyme induction is a process by which the other substrate like for example, it may be drug or there may be environmental pollutant or there may be some other cofactor like smokers, they usually have a enhanced metabolism. So, that accelerate the biotransformation which corresponding to the reduction of unmetabolized drug. So, the enzyme induction may causes you know when there is an in enzyme induction there could be related to toxicity also, because there is could be toxic metabolite release. You can take a number of example of induction of drug metabolism like phenobarbital, rifampicin, glucocorticoid, because it is induced by cytochrome 3 A or you can take an example of phenobarbital, which is also metabolized by cytochrome 2 B 1 or rifampicin 2 D 6. So, isonazide or chronic alcohol to cytochrome 2 E 1. So, related to the drug that how it is metabolized, basically if it is induced, definitely you can take an example of all this drug. Now, when you it is induced, what is the consequence of enzyme induction? Like you say that when enzyme is induced, it is means it is increased the rate of metabolism. And because of increase of rate of metabolism, so ultimately when you look at the drug plasma concentration, it will alter and there could be enhanced oral phosphorus metabolism also. You have number of example, because, because of phosphorus metabolism you have a decreased level in a systemic circulation and also it will reduce the bioavailability. So, the question here is if the metabolite is active, whether this metabolite is active or reactive or may be inactive. So, it also look at that increased drug effect or toxicity. So, similarly we have number of example that if there is a release of active metabolite, you can correlate to it drug having side effect and toxicity. And also one example that you can take it like you can take an example of carbamazepine that how the drug develop you know tolerance. That means, you increase the dose, you would have the similar effect, same effect. So, you can take up example of you know carbamazepine where it has a auto induction of metabolism. Now, take the another part inhibition of drug metabolism. We have already discussed detail about you know enhance this how to accelerate the metabolism, what is the effect and if you inhibit the drug metabolism. Like suppose, if metabolizing enzyme and several drug or chemicals, they have a ability to decrease the drug metabolism active like certain enzymes are inhibited. Now, what will you get the effect? Once the drug inhibit the isoenzyme, so definitely the it will affect that you know level of the drugs. So, most common example of inhibition there could be common you know competition between that same enzyme, because many times we use a concomitant medication polypharmacy. There are numerous example they have been inhibit one or more cytochrome dependent biotransformation is also there along with warfarin. Like I can give you example of omeprazole, if you give omeprazole it is a potent inhibitor of three cytochrome isoenzyme and which will result the warfarin metabolism. So, if you give two drug together, so definitely plasma concentration of warfarin will increase and this is going to having a risk to the patient for excessive bleeding. So, you have to also think that number of concomitant medication, how many drugs are there, which pathway it is acting and is it you know inhibiting and because of inhibition this is there any consequences like I have given the example of warfarin. Similarly, we have a very common drug which is used as antifungal and I think you know the drug that is ketoconazole. Now, when you take an example of ketoconazole, it is having lot of interaction because it is metabolized by cytochrome 3 A 4 and it is a potent inhibitor. So, any drug which is co administrator with ketoconazole like I can give you a common example with anti HIV drug, these are proteus inhibitor. So, if you concomitantly you would use ketoconazole since it is a potent inhibitor, so definitely it will have a risk of toxicity. So, these are some common example, but otherwise also you have to be very careful that you have to think of uh, the metabolism enhancing or inhibition, particularly you can take an example of grapefruit juice. 
and this inhibits cytochrome 3A4 or kinesios or dietary product, you have to see that is it inhibiting. So, you have to look for other cofactor also in terms of drug metabolism enhancement and inhibition. Now, when you look at that consequence of inhibition, that enzyme is inhibited, so there is a depressed metabolism of the drug. So, this is going to anyway affect the plasma half life or duration of drug action or it is also alter the efficacy and toxicity. So, you have to be very careful, you have to look at when as I said that we have to know it is an about the drug of how it is absorbed, metabolized, distributed and eliminated. So, the whole metabolism is inhibited then definitely significantly plasma level will be increased. Now, there is another common term is used you need to know is fast pass metabolism. What do you understand by fast pass metabolism? That means, drug is metabolized before it reaches systemic circulation. So, fast pass metabolism is a pre systemic metabolism may be defined you can say that loss of drug through bias and transformation before it enter into systemic circulation. So, following the absorption like suppose if you give the drug orally and drug is metabolized itself in intestinal wall as I say other than liver there are enzymes present in liver, kidney, lungs. So, if you give orally if it is metabolized into the intestinal wall or before it reaches the portal circulation. So, definitely you call it a fast pass metabolism. So, a drug is metabolized in drug wall for example, you can take it cytochrome 3 a 4 enzyme in the system even the portal blood, but most conveniently it is in the liver. So, it is responsible for metabolism before drug reaches into the systemic circulation. So, what is the consequence you get? You reduce the drug will be reduced when you talk about bioavailability. Second example of fast pass metabolism you can take number of drugs. One is propanolol, but you have to also see that suppose if you give propanolol, it inhibit the hepatic circulation. So, this also affect the metabolism. You can take an example of morphine also, salbutamol also, hydrocortisone, nitrate, lignocan. So, these are common example of drug having fast pass metabolism. So, basically you need to take a concept that fast pass metabolism means it defines loss of drug through biotransformation. That means, it is not reaching the systemic circulation that pre systemic metabolism take place. So, you take an example of propanolol, morphine or including lignocan. So, there are so many drugs having fast pass metabolism. Now, another term is commonly used in biotransformation is Hoffman elimination. So, basically when you talk about Hoffman elimination, it is a non enzymatic biotransformation. So, what happen in non enzymatic biotransformation? The drug will be metabolized in plasma which is spontaneously through a molecular rearrangement and without the involvement of any enzymatic action. So, common example I can give you is atracuria. So, this is also one like we talk about fast pass metabolism, Hoffman elimination for example, a atracurium. Now, once a drug is metabolized by phase 1, phase 2, enzymatic, non-enzymatic, microsomal, non-microsomal. So, ultimately it need to be excreted because the host responsibility is it need to be detoxified, it need to be eliminated from the body. Now, look at that elimination that you know excretion, excretion is a final excretion of the drug in a body. So, you can define this process whereby the drug or their metabolite are irreversibly transferred. You can take an example of internal environment to external environment that means from the body out of body. So, what are the principal organ it is responsible is the kidney, you call it a renal excretion. But other than uh, you know kidney also, you can take an example of lungs from the inhalation or from the biliary product, it is goes to the intestine or excreted in stool, salivary gland, sweat gland and these are all also called renal excretion also from tears. As you can remember that when a doctor prescribed rifampicin, it is always advised that do not get scared, there could be red tears there could be red sweat and there could be red urine. So, that means, this drug is 
going to be excreted in a tears also, it can be excreted in sweat also, it can be there could be red urine. So, these are excretion is through kidney primarily, but there could be non renal excretion like intestine, salivary gland and sweat gland. So, we have a number of examples. Now, when you discuss about that drug is excreted or eliminated through the kidney. So, basically urinary excretion of the drug is you can divide into three parts. One is glomerular filtration, continuously it is going on. Then there are tubular reabsorption and from the tube loop of handles it drug is get secreted and get eliminated. Now, when you talk about first part glomerular filtration it is basically a non selective or it is a unidirectional process. So, almost all the drug which is lipid soluble and insoluble and basically water soluble except it is bound to plasma protein it cannot be you know eliminated filtrated. So, other than that it is get filtered and so depending on a drug plasma protein binding and also another factor is very important is renal blood flow. So, this is what the first part has been happening through glomerular filtration. Now, look at the second part is tubular reabsorption. Now, when you talk about tubular reabsorption is the drug from the renal tube that is lumen into the blood plasma. So, it occurred through a passive diffusion method. We have already di discussed detail about passive and facilitated one. And so, it is important to know that lipid solubility, how much drug is ionized and also very important factor is urinary pH. I can give you some of the example of pH how it altered the reabsorption and excretion. Now, if you see the reabsorption of drug particular drug A, so definitely it is going to affect the half life of the drug. Now, you take example of urine it is alkali normally it is a uh, uh, normal acidic pH is maintained, but if you make it a urine alkaline. So, definitely if you have a drug which is weak acid it will have more excretion. Now, at the same time if you have a urine made of acidic, so there will be decreased excretion as a weak acid. So, vice versa. So, if you make it urine pH it is depending on that what kind of like uic acid or alkaline is it vice versa process is it is going to alter the excretion. Now, opposite is weak basis. So, this principle can be used in case of a drug poisoning overdose in order to enhance the excretion. So, elimination of weak base like morphine you can take a morphine or opiate like substances or for example, amphetamine it can be enhanced by acidifying urine. So, this is can be put in a we practice in a poisoning cases. Now, if you alkalize the urine like for example, some of the drug like barbiturate or some of the drug like salicylate poisoning it can be enhanced the excretion. So, this is what the part of tubular reabsorption that if more tubular reabsorption take place definitely it is going to affect the half life of the drug, but you can make it alkaline or you know make it a acidic one depending on a poisoning cases it can be used for practical purpose also. Now, what happened in normal phenomena is tubular secretion. Basically, when you talk about tubular secretion that means this is a part it involved the active transport. Like earlier we discussed the passive diffusion, here in tubular secretion there is active transport of organic acid or the bases by two separate classes. So, there are example of transporter like if I give you example of endomethacin or cimetidine of course, cimetidine not, uh, not much used nowadays. So, in these two drug if you see that mainly it is occur in proximal tubules. So, if the renal clearance of a drug for example, if you take a example of 120 ml per minute. So, you can take a additional tubular secretion may be occurring. So, let us take some of the example that how tubular secretion like you can take an example of penicillin, probenicid, salicylate, endomethacin or you can take an example of some of the basic drug also. Like what are the basic drug you can take an example of thiazide, amyloride or prosemide or I earlier I had given an example of semitinium. So, this is what the secretion ultimately it is going to eliminate from the body. Now, if you talk about drug utilizing same active transporter or it may compete with other one also. Like 
just take an example of probenecid. As you say, the probenecid has a high affinity to tubular endometrism and it does block the active transport of penicillin. So, there could be you know competitive one also from each other. So, that also need to be looked at. Now, another concept is when you talk about excretion is you have to also say that there are a couple of parameters we discuss. One is we discuss about how much is renal flow is there, urinary pH, there are so many factors. Now, when you talk about renal clearance, basically renal clearance is you give a drug, you know that what is the volume of the drug in the body, how much it is cleared in one minute via kidney. Let us put it in the formula, like suppose you talk about a renal clearance. So, you calculate the renal clearance that what is the concentration of drug like you made it as CU in urine or what is the volume of distribution and then you estimate the concentration in plasma. So, that will give CU P by concentration in plasma that how much it is per ml per minute. So, that you can explain as renal clearance of the drug. Now, it is important to know that factor affecting the renal clearance. As you know that you think of it whether it is basic drug or it is acidic drug or you need to know the physiological properties of the drug that affect the renal clearance and what is the plasma concentration of the drug. As I said that if it is highly plasma protein binding, so definitely it will affect. Then you look at the distribution, how it is distribution and binding to the drugs. Urinary pH is very, very important and at the same time what is the renal flow, blood flow of the kidney and of course, when you use concomitant many medication like drug drug interaction, there will be drug food interaction and also you have to see the disease condition. Now, normally these factors also see that in case of a infant, in case of a younger children or adult or as you know that as the age progresses beyond 60, 65, definitely renal clearance or hepatic clearance is less. So, another factor is disease, if suppose the patient having chronic renal failure, patient having some hepatic problem, so there also it is affecting the renal clearance. So, all factors physiological properties, plasma concentration, urinary pH, blood flow, drug interaction or drug foot interaction and underlying disease condition need to be looked at for the renal clearance. Now, there are common you know you should take that concept that what do you understand by a first order cardiogenetics and what do you understand by zero order cardiogenetics and what does it ex exactly mean if you say this drug is first order cardiogenetics. Now, if I say this is a first order cardiogenetics that means you look at the rate of elimination and this rate of elimination whether it is directly proportional to drug concentration. Like if you plot the curve as early we discussed. So, when you say first order cardiogenetics means C1 remains a constant. So, that means if you look at the half life of any drug of first order cardiogenetics, this remain a constant, half life is remain a constant. So, this is a that means what does it mean? If you say half life remain a constant, that means the constant fraction of the drug is eliminated in per unit time. So, if you look at this half life and concentration it will be decreased almost by 50 percent. So, whole together you can call it a linear kinetics, this first order kinetics you can call it a linear kinetics. Now, let us discuss another concept is zero order kinetics. Now, in case of a zero order kinetics what happen the rate of elimination it is remain constant. So, what you get is the clearance is decreases with decreased concentration. So, T half is never constant, the earlier we have a linear kinetic T half is almost constant. So, that means, in zero order kinetics, the constant amount of the drug is eliminated per unit time. So, this concept you call it, when you call it zero order kinetics, you call it non-linear kinetics. Earlier we used to call linear kinetics, this is zero order kinetics, you call it non-linear kinetics. So, this is two concept is first order kinetics 
first order kinetic which is called linear kinetics and zero order kinetics which is called non-linear kinetics you need to understand that. Now, look at that other non-renal excretion. Primarily, we said kidney in T part, glomerular filtration, then tubular reabsorption, tubular secretion. Second part we talk about is biliary or fecal, which is drug is excreted in a stool. Now, if you look at biliary, there are transporter present in the canalicular membrane of hepatocyte and which this hepatocyte is actively you know secrete the drug and drugs and metabolite into the bile. So, what happened liver transform this various drug into bilirubin from the plasma to the bile by means of various transport system. So, these are also been excreted into the. So, there are significant elimination of the bile you can take some of the example of drug which is excreted through the bile which goes in the stool is quinine colchicine. So, some of the drug also secreted in the bile, but it does not reabsorb through enterohepatic circulation. Like if you say digitoxin is converted into digoxin in intestine and again it is absorbed to the system, systemic circulation. So, there are some example I have given how the drug is excreted to hepatocyte and it can be also reabsorbed. So, this drug is excreted into the stool through the bile. Now, look at this excretion by other road. I had given an example of refampicin, how you get to know that red tears, you remember I think red sweat or red urine. So, drug is excreted through the sweat, saliva and tears. So, these are the root of independent mainly by it is by diffusion or non INS form. So, you can take an example of like suppose a drug is uh, you know released or excreted through saliva. So, normally in TDM we also take a plasma concentration and some of the example I can give also people take it from saliva in therapeutic drug monitoring. So, it is almost equivalent. So, normally it again swallow back. So, it can be also determination of concentration. So, it is also excreted, but patient or subject may swallow back. Now, another example are that many drugs we are very careful. We write in package insert that do not allow this drug for in case of a lactation, because these drug are excreted in milk. So, you have to careful that what are the drug it is excreted in the milk. So, that is also there that it can be have a exposure to the baby. Now, excretion of the hair and skin though it is very uh, not important, but many places it is used. Like you might have been knowing that nowadays therapeutic drug monitoring people use hair because hair grow at a particular rate and the drug is also deposited. Many of this forensic you might have remember for uh, Napoleons that it can be also deposited in hair can be estimated or by inhalation like in the lungs where alveolar excretion take place like general anesthetic. So, though we say primarily kidney, but biliary there are so many other minor you know excretion take place from the sweat, tears and hairs or from the inhalation. So, altogether if you see that we had discussed about today the biotransformation part. So, biotransformation means we talk about drug metabolism, but at the same time we also discuss about genobiotic. So, it has two parts that how you know drug become inactive pharmacologically and later on through phase 1 and phase 2 reactions it get eliminated from the body and how different elimination and different cytochrome metabolism take place other than cytochrome also and how it is metabolite and excreted. What is the clinical significance of this metabolism? in terms of you know toxicity, in terms of efficacy or in terms of safety prospect. So, you need to know detail about that and also we had discussed about concept of you know I can give the example of zero order and fast order kinetics. So, these are the you know basic concept you need to know while you discuss about pharmacokinetic because as I said that moment you talk about any drugs, any medicine you need to know detail that how the drug is absorbed how the drug is distributed in the body, how the drug is metabolized, 
how the drug is excreted. So, with this I thank you very much for listening to this. <laughs>